is Jessie V, and in today's video, I'm going to be telling you guys three very scary short stories. The first one we're going to be talking about is called Soap Sally, and this is a very creepy legend that a lot of people actually believe is true. But before we get into that, I just want to remind you guys that we have restocked a few of the items on our website that were highly requested. We don't usually do this unless people really request we bring them back, so we're doing one more restock of these items. So I will put a link down below in the description if you would like them. All right, so like I said, the very first story we're gonna be talking about is called Soap Sally. There's a legend in some regions of Appalachia about Soap Sally. People say she's this creepy looking old woman who wears way too much makeup. And according to this legend, Soap Sally walks around the town at night looking for children who have run away from their homes. And if she finds one of these runaway children, children, she will grab them by the hand and she will lead them towards her house in the middle of the woods. And then nobody ever sees these runaway children ever again. So this woman is extremely creepy and you definitely never want to meet her, especially if you're a runaway child. So next time you're thinking about running away from home, think about Soap Sally. People say she turns the children she takes into soap. And if you guys didn't know, there's this special kind of soap called lye soap and it's basically made out of the bones and fat of animals and this is like a real thing that people use to make soap. So they say that Soap Sally uses the fat and bones of the runaway children to make her own special brand of soap. Some even say she makes the soap to resemble children's hands which is kind of even creepier in my opinion because the hands look so realistic and even scarier is that when she's done making all of these creepy soap hands. She walks around the town and sells the soap hands to the parents of the missing kids. That is so messed up. So these parents are out like searching for their missing children and she's like, hey, want to buy some soap hands? I swear, they're only soap. <laughs> so every single time a child would go missing in this town, a few days later, Soap Sally would be out there selling her soaps. And like no one put two and two together? No? And apparently she would sell them for super, super cheap to these unsuspecting, sad parents. Ugh. So because this is a legend for hundreds and hundreds of years, parents from around this area have been telling their kids to behave and come home on time and never run away from home or so Sally would get them. So I just, I read that story and I found it to be so disturbing. And creepy. If your parents have ever told you about Soap Sally, definitely comment down below because I've never been personally told about it, but I'm sure some parents out there have been telling their kids this for years. All right, next we have a story called Family Portraits. A long time ago, there was a man who went out hunting in the woods. As night fell, he found himself in an unfamiliar part of the forest. He walked and walked, but he couldn't find his way home. I feel like it would be so scary to be lost in a forest at night. And don't get me wrong, I love forests, but I would not want to be there lost at midnight or anytime after the sun goes down. Wandering aimlessly in the dark, he eventually came to a small clearing where an old cabin stood. Tired and weary, he decided to see if he could stay there for the night. When he walked closer to this old cabin, he saw that the door was wide open. And when he walked inside, he saw that this cabin was totally empty. No one was there. And what was even theory is that there was a bed, but then there was a fireplace that was burning. So obviously someone must have been there to set this fire in the house. The hunter threw himself on the bed and decided to sleep there for the night. And he just thought that if the owner came back to the cabin, he would explain what happened and hope that the owner would let him stay there. Lying on the bed half asleep, he looked around and was surprised to see the walls were covered with paintings. They appeared to be family portraits all framed and painted in incredible detail. Now, these portraits were so lifelike, he said, and each picture that he looked at was uglier than the next. These people just looked so creepy to him, and he couldn't figure out why this cabin had so many family portraits all around the room. And the way they were painted made it seem as if the eyes were staring directly at him. It was incredibly unnerving. So he decided the only way he could sleep is to close 
close his eyes and no longer look at these hideous faces looking back at him. So he lied down, put the blanket over his head, and finally fell asleep. In the morning, the hunter woke up to find the cabin bathed in sunlight. And when he looked up, he realized that there was no family portraits on the walls around him. Only windows. And that's how the story ends. It's so creepy. So if you did not catch that, basically all through the night, he thought they were family portraits, but they were actually windows where people were looking in at him sleeping. Ah! This story really gave me the chills when I read it as well. I mean, old scary cabins are creepy enough. I mean, to be watched as well, that's my worst nightmare. No, thank you. And that's also why I probably would never like walk into an old scary cabin at night. I'd rather like sleep outside on the ground. <laughs> Let a wolf get me. I do not want to be in a scary witch cabin. All right, and the last story I'm gonna tell you guys is called Clap Clap. And this is actually kind of similar to the situation of the last story about a young couple who was lost in a forest. One day, a young married couple went hiking in the mountains. As the sun began to set, they realized they were lost. And the wife was getting very worried, but her husband was trying to comfort her. He was saying, don't worry, we'll find our way home. But hours went by and they still could not find the way back to their car. After walking for hours and hours, they still had no idea where they were. And it was growing very, very dark. So this husband and wife were getting very worried. They didn't have a map or a compass with them and all the trees were looking the same. Just when they were about to give up, they came across an old cabin in the clearing. The cabin looked as if it had seen better days. It was dilapidated and seemed like it hasn't been used in a very long time. Some of the windows were cracked, the tiles were broken on the floor. It just seemed like it hadn't been used in like 50 years. So the husband knocked on the front door, but there was no answer. So they assumed it would be okay for them to walk inside and try to sleep for the night. Inside the cabin, there was very little furniture. There was a few couches, and chairs, but there was dust all over them. As the couple walked around, they smelled something very strange in this cabin, something that had like a musty, gross smell. And the walls and floors were covered head to toe in graffiti. And written in red were the words, death, 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 death over and over again, you guys get the picture. And the husband reached out to touch the walls and realized the paint was still wet. The paint. <laughs> the couple was obviously very frightened, but they realized they had nowhere else to go. You know, there's wild animals outside prowling the woods and they wanted to be sheltered. So despite the creepy writing on the wall, they decided to sleep the night. So the husband and wife wrapped themselves up in an old piece of carpet and tried to sleep. In the middle of the night, they were woken up by this strange rustling noise. It sounded as if something was walking around or moving around inside the cabin with them. So the husband walked around the cabin, he didn't see anything. So then he walked up to the bedroom window and he looked outside and he called out, who's there? But there was no answer. And he was about to go to bed when the wife was like, maybe the person who's out there can't speak. So the husband looked out the window and said, if there's anybody out there, clap once for yes and twice for no. And all of a sudden he heard a loud clap. So he turned to his wife and he was like, you're right, there is someone out there and I don't think they can speak. So he tried to communicate with this person out there with clapping. So he leaned out the window again and said, are you the owner of this cabin? And then he heard clap, clap, which means no. Are you a man? Clap, clap. Are you a woman then? Clap, clap. Are you human? Clap, clap. So everything is a no. So a chill went down his spine because he asked if this thing was human and it said no. So then he asked, are you alone out there? Clap, clap. How many are with you? Clap for each person that's with you. Clap, clap. and it went on and on and on. So each clap was for how many things were outside the cabin. And that's how the story ends, and I found that to be so creepy as well. I mean, something about clapping with an unknown force is just not okay with me. I remember there was like a clap clap scene in I think the Conjuring movie it was, and that scene used to creep me out so much with like this unknown clapping going around the house. So yeah, I'm not sure I'd wanna play the clap clap game with any sort of ghost, but I don't know, maybe I will someday, who knows. 
on the vlog channel, maybe. Anyways, so guys, those are the three creepy short stories I wanted to tell you guys today. Comment down below which one creeped you out the most. But yeah, I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!